I hear so many evangelical preachers, whenever they give the invitation for people to be saved, say, turn from your sin and trust Christ. That seems to be ubiquitous. Almost all of them say that. What do they mean? What do they mean when they say turn from your sin? Are they saying that part of our salvation is giving up sin? If so, they are not preaching the gospel. They are preaching works salvation. If they mean, when they say, turn from your sin, if they mean, give up your sin, if that was the case, my dad would have never been saved. For those of you who don't know, before my dad was saved, he was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic for over 20 years. He could not stop drinking. He was addicted to alcohol. He tried everything to stop, and he couldn't stop. He tried for 20 years to give up his drinking, and he couldn't do it. If Harvey Hicks, that's the pastor who led my dad to Christ in Little Rock, Arkansas, High Street Baptist Church, if Harvey Hicks had told my dad to turn from his drinking, dad would have said, preacher, I've tried to do that for 20 years, and I can't. And if that's what I've got to do to get saved, I'll never get saved, and he would have walked out. When Paul said, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, that's Acts 20:21. 20, the word repentance means change your mind. Change your mind about God. Repentance toward God. Change your mind about God. People don't get saved because their thinking about God is all messed up. They're thinking about God as, as totally averse from anything necessary for salvation. Some don't believe that their sin has offended God. They're filled with pride. They know they've sinned, but their sin doesn't bother them. And more than that, they don't think their sin bothers God. They have no guilt of sin in their heart. Their pride and their arrogance supersedes and prevails over their heart. They cannot feel sorry for their sin. They cannot feel sorrow for what their sin has done to God for how God is offended at their sin and how their sin put Jesus on the cross and all the suffering that he went through was because of their sin. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to them because they're so proud and arrogant. So they've got, they've got to swallow their pride. They've got to humble their hearts and acknowledge the sinfulness of their sin. 
They've got to they've got to recognize the wretchedness of their life and how offended God is at their words, their conduct, their thoughts. To repent, they've got to change their mind about their own sin. They've got to change their mind and recognize that my sin is a horrible stench in the nostrils of a holy, righteous God. That God is offended highly at my sin. They've got to change their mind and, the, and, the, and recognize the, the gross wickedness of their heart which requires humility. As long as men are filled with pride, they'll never be able to humble themselves before God as a sinner. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners under repentance. If you think you're a goody two-shoe and that you don't think that your sin has offended God. You don't think that your sin is an absolute stench in the nostrils of God. You can never be saved until you change your mind about your own sin. Humble yourself before God. But then there's others. They don't believe that God loves you as you are. And he can save you without your religion and your own good works. That's the second group that are going to hell because of their lack of salvation. The first group, they don't believe that their sin has offended God and their pride justifies and condones their sin in the face of God. The second group, they don't really believe that God would save them just as they are. They've, they've got to clean themselves up. They've got to work their way. They've got to go to church. They've got to keep the commandments. They've got to go to the priest and get the little wafer in their mouth. They've, they've got to go to confession. Or they've got to go to the Sunday school program at, down there at the Baptist church. They got to take the catechism. They got to. They got to. They got to get get involved with the, all the the programs of the church. They got to be baptized. They've got to. They've got to do these things they, because God just can't save me just like I am as a sinner in front of God with all of the ugliness and all of the unrighteousness of our lives. We've got to, we got to put on the cloak of righteousness ourselves. We've got to earn it. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe I need to trust Christ, but that's not enough. I, I've also got to join the church. I've also got to obey the Ten Commandments. I've also got to obey the Golden Rule. I've also I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Both of these individuals have a problem with pride. The first group is that their pride won't let them recognize their own sin as it is before God. The second group, they have to take pride in their works. They cannot rely just on the grace of God. They cannot rely just on faith. It has to be something that they do. Hey, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And if you're not doing what I do, you're going to hell. I'm going to heaven because I'm a good guy. I'm a good boy. I'm a good girl. I got baptized. I've joined the church. I keep the commandments. I go to confession. I do all these things. You need to do all these things like I do. They're like the Pharisees. The Pharisees could never change their mind about their own righteousness, which is no righteousness. But to them, that was their righteousness. They kept the law. They were morally good. 
They obeyed the law of Moses the best they could. They were religious. Not only that, they were teachers of the law. People called them rabbi, master. Both of these people have a problem with pride. And both of those groups of people are lost, unsaved, and on their way to a devil's hell. So when you say, turn from your sin, wait a minute. If in our heart we recognize our sin as sin, we understand the sinfulness of our sin. We feel the weight of guilt on our hearts because of our sin. And we come to Jesus Christ by faith and receive him as our Savior, trusting nothing else. We will find salvation full and free. As long as you're trying to do anything to earn your salvation, you're as lost as you can be. You don't have salvation if you're trying to earn it. You need to, you need to change your mind. You need to repent about your religion, about your good works that you're depending on to save you. You need to change your mind about that and put your faith in Jesus Christ to save you just as you are. A sinner which Jesus died to save. Dad knew the shame and the guilt of his sin. That wasn't his problem. But he had to learn that God loved him and would save him without religion or works if he would only put his faith in Christ, which he did. And God forgave him and cleansed him and gave him eternal life. And by the way, if you don't know it, we have a free CD of my dad's life story of how he lived as an alcoholic for all those years, how he found Christ, and from the time he was saved to the time that he passed away, 46 years later, not one drop of alcoholic beverage did my dad take after his salvation. And we have that free of charge. It's a dramatized version where it's all acted out. It was produced by the Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago, Illinois. And we will send that free of charge to anybody that asks it or anybody in this room that wants it. All you got to do is write us and, and we will send it to you. If you watch, or actually listen, it's a CD, not a DVD, you will, you will learn that dad was raised in a, in a church. His dad, my grandfather, was a deacon in a church. And it was a church that taught works salvation. And when my dad was a teenager, and he got in some trouble, he had done some things wrong, not major stuff, kid stuff, but it was still sin, it was still wrong. And the way his church taught was the only way you could be saved is if you do good works. 
And my dad figured, well, I've already blown it. So I'm lost. So I might as well just do whatever because I've already, I'm already, I've already lost it. That false religion set my dad on a life of alcoholism. The good news is not only did my dad get saved, but not too many years after my dad came to know the Lord, he gave my grandfather, his dad, the church deacon, the gospel. And my grandfather accepted Christ by faith and was saved. And my, my grandfather asked my dad, he said, son, why don't the preachers tell us this? That's the question that a lot of preachers are going to face when they stand before the judgment of God. And they're going to hear people say, why didn't you tell me the gospel? Why did you tell me I have to earn my way to heaven? Why did you tell me I have to go to church and be baptized and do all these? Why didn't you tell me of the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? So, dear friend, I don't know what you need to change your mind about. You may need to change your mind about your own sin and take accountability for yourself and quit masking your sin oh it's not so bad oh I'm not so bad you start doing that when you're a little kid didn't you maybe your mom said that to you you're not so bad so you get to thinking I'm not so bad and you grow up and your sins get greater and greater and I'm not so bad that's not so bad and you go through your whole life justifying your wicked wretched life you need to change your mind and own up to the fact that you're a sinner. Own up to the fact that your sin put Jesus on the cross. Own up to the fact that your sin separated you from God. Own up to who you are. Or maybe you need to change your mind about all these works you think you've got to do to be saved. And you're out there working and working and working trying to get saved. The truth is, for by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You need to change your mind about all this religion that you're involved in and realize that God wants to save you just as you are and that you must put your faith and trust in him and him alone minus and plus nothing. So these preachers that say turn from your sin, I'm not really sure what they're meaning. But the true gospel is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.